Hey guys, it's Joe. I am finally back after being down for a few days due to bronchitis, so thanks for your patience. I'm so excited to be back. My last video before I left, I talked about Roy Moore and the Alabama Senate race. At that point, uh, recording that video, I did not know who was going to win. Turns out he didn't, for which I am incredibly grateful. So that is a, a, a win. But I want to talk about a couple things. Leading up to this election, I listened to so many interviews of men and women who were still supporting Rory Moore after learning of all of these allegations. In fact, many who said that they believed the women, but still supported him. The one I really want to talk to today was an interview done by Jordan Klepper of Comedy Central at a Roy Moore rally. He was speaking to a young lady about my age. She was talking about how people should be believed when they come forward and say that they've been sexually assaulted, abused, or harassed. And then he said, but you're still supporting Roy Moore. And she said, yeah, absolutely, because those women are lying. And he was like, but, but didn't you just say we should believe women? And she's like, no, 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 but they're, they're lying because he's a man of God. I can't see him committing those crimes. I'm gonna put a link in the description to this video so you can take a look for yourself. That is such a dangerous viewpoint to have and one that so many Americans hold. The fact that we think that because someone denies it means that they're innocent is ridiculous. And the fact that we think because someone is a man of God means that they would not commit these kind of crimes is insane. I believe that her words really hit on the reason why so many survivors are not believed when they come forward. Why so many survivors don't come forward in the first place. Because we have this idea that because people claim to be something that they couldn't do horrible things. The reality is, is that over 93% of sexual assaults are committed by family members and by people that you know closely. That is a terrifying thought. That's talking about mothers and fathers and aunts and uncles and cousins and pastors and teachers and coaches, the people who are supposed to be safe in our lives. It is a horrifying thought to think that there are monsters all around us or that there could be. It is so much easier to think about stranger danger. It is so much easier to think that because Roy Moore says he's a man of God and a Christian, well, by golly, he must be. And so we can support him. We can say all these people are lying about him, blah, 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 whatever. But that's just not the case. And I am legitimately concerned for everyone who adheres to this mindset that because I couldn't see someone committing that kind of a crime, they wouldn't do it. The people who have committed atrocities against me are not the sorts of people you would see committing types of crimes like that. Many of my friends and many fellow survivors I've spoken to have similar stories. By family members, by pastors, by teachers, by coaches. People just don't see those kinds of people committing those kinds of crimes and so we automatically put our faith in them, we automatically put our trust in them, we leave our kids with a babysitter we met two minutes ago because it's a sweet 16 year old girl who looks totally trustworthy. One of the shocking reality is, is that you cannot tell if someone is a sexual predator. Let me give an example of this. Six years ago, I was raped by a pastor and someone that I knew very well and was in a close relationship with. After that, I was a complete and total mess. I didn't know who to trust, I didn't know who to turn to. And so, in steps Paul, a very good friend of the family, someone I've known since I was a child. Someone who's always been there for my family, who has always shown up for us, who's always been there. He contacted me and said he'd been through similar things growing up. He was heartbroken to hear what I had been through and he wanted to pay for part of my counseling. If I wanted to talk, he was there. So over the next few years, he was the only person I trusted spiritually. If you had asked me who I thought he was, I would tell you he is the only person I know who lives his life like Jesus actually said to live your life. He spent his entire life traveling around, helping people, serving people, and showing up. Or so he says, and so I thought. I met with him many times alone, one-on-one, -on -one, and discussed what I was going through. He gained my trust. He got me to talk about incredibly personal, intimate things. And then he started a support group for survivors of sexual assault in church. He counseled my husband and I. He married my husband and I. We remained close friends with him. Until about five months ago, I learned that he was a sex offender that he was convicted of sexual crimes in three different countries over the course of eight years. If there is anyone I did not think would be a sexual predator, it was him. But I was so desperate to be heard, to be listened to, and to be seen after what had happened to me. And he knew that, he stepped in, that's what predators do. And I didn't see it, and because he was a trusted family friend, I never ran any checks on him. I never, I never had my radar up. He is not the kind of person you would expect to be a monster. But guess what? He is. 
When we think the statement of, oh, I just can't see him being that kind of a person is true, when it comes to sexual crimes, we really have a problem. And I believe that we are then in a place of danger, which concerns me for everyone. The reality that sexual predators are amongst us and generally people we know is so uncomfortable to look at. The fact that they are often our heroes is horrible, but it's something that we have to recognize and deal with. I believe it is infinitely important that we learn to recognize the fact that we do not know who predators are and not to let our guard down because someone doesn't seem that way. Should we live our lives not trusting anyone? No. Sometimes it's hard not to do that. And especially if you've been hurt, if you've been abused, if you've been attacked, it is really hard not to do that. And it is a struggle every day not to distrust every single person you meet. But that is a really rough way to live life and it's not how I want to live my life and so I'm trying to fight that in my own head. But we have to keep our radar up, even if someone doesn't seem like that kind of a person. And that is a hard thing to do, but it is something I believe that is so necessary. The conversations I have because of the videos that I'm putting out are really fantastic. So I, those are a gift to me, honestly, guys. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Please keep commenting. Please keep sharing your thoughts. Please keep challenging me. I really, I really enjoy that. I really appreciate it. So if you're interested in seeing more videos like this and you aren't familiar with me, my name is Joe Backwith. You can find me on YouTube or Facebook, and I look forward to seeing you next time.